This is a quick video to show you the butterfly method when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions. Make sure that your denominators are uncommon or not like denominators if you're going to use this method. When it's like denominators, you don't have to do that. You can just make it one big fraction bar. All right, so what I'm going to start with is the top numerator of the first fraction, and I'm going to make a wing of my butterfly that goes down to the denominator of the second fraction. And now what I want to do is multiply those two numbers together. So that's going to give me two times three is six, and then I have x, y. Now on the other side, I wanna take the second numerator from the second fraction, and I want to multiply times the first denominator. And there you can really see, I already kind of have a butterfly. Don't judge me. And so if I multiply that, all of this is going on my numerator. Four times four X is gonna be positive 16 X. And now at the bottom, what I wanna do is just take that and multiply both the denominators. And so that is what's gonna go under the fraction bar. Four times three Y is 12 Y. Now your directions will ask you to simplify. So that's what we're gonna do. If I uh, put this in factor form, the greatest common factor between six and 16 is going to be two. And then I have an X in both of my terms. So I can also bring out an X. What's left over is, 6xy divided by 2x, that's going to give me 3y. And then 16x divided by 2x is simply 8. And on the bottom, I still have 12y. Well, what I notice is on the outside of my parentheses at the top, um, I have a 2x. And on the bottom, I have a 12y. So the 2 and the 12 can simplify even further. So that becomes a one and this becomes a six. I divided both by two. What that would look like in factored form is X times the quantity of three Y plus eight, all divided by six Y. And in some instances, you'll see that the answer will actually be expanded. So in that case, it's going to be X times each one of these terms. And that's going to be three X Y plus eight X all divided by 6y. So those are two acceptable answers for that rational expression. And this is the last example. I'm going to do the same thing. Now this time I have a minus sign in between them. The minus sign only goes with the numerator of the second fraction. So what I tell my students to do is to just go ahead and change this to a plus sign and then make this a negative sign. But since there's an expression there, you're gonna to have to go ahead and put that in parentheses. So you'll remember to distribute that negative to each one of those terms. So as a matter of fact, what I would do is just go ahead and rewrite that. So I'm, I have four N over three plus negative six N plus one, because that negative one on the outside times another negative one is gonna to turn to a positive one. This is all divided by n plus two. So let's go ahead and do the butterfly method. If I did that, I'm going from, I'm creating my wings from the numerator to the denominator, going from left to right, top to bottom, however you want to look at it. And I end up with four n squared plus eight n. If you want to know where that came from, that's taking four n which is on the top and multiplying it times the quantity of n, my, I mean, n plus two. So that's where I'm getting that from. Now I wanna go back and I want to do the second wing. Poor little butterfly. Okay, when I do my second wing, it is going to be three times negative six n plus one. Remember we, we rewrote that. And then you just distribute it out. So that's negative 18n plus 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify the bottom by multiplying it. And in factor form is simply 3 times the quantity of n plus 2. So let's do that first and then and see if we can factor out the top. And if we can't, then we'll, I'll show you both ways in factor form 
in the denominator and also expanded form. So at the top, what I can do is go ahead and I can combine my like terms. I have 4n squared and then 8n minus 18n is negative 10n plus 3. And looking at that, I know I can't factor that because 4 times 3 is going to give me 12. And there's not two numbers that will multiply to give me 12 and add to give me that middle number, negative 10. So I can't factor that any further. So I can either leave it in this form or I can expand out the denominator. So leave the top 4n squared minus 10n plus 3 all over 3n plus 6. It just really depends on whoever is creating the assignment or the test sheet as to how they want the answer to look. Okay, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe.